some issues with some frozen bolts the uh, front bumper those are always a pain and we'll get the uh, this top uh, aluminum uh, piece off there's little T bolts in here that you gotta take off as well um, and then we'll get the back done uh, the gear selector the forward reverse that's always always frozen on there so we'll probably have to cut that off we'll just replace it um, with a new jockey shift or something. Um, we'll take the back rear seats off as well uh, to get that off there. So we're gonna get this thing ready for paint. The customer um, wants to paint this Cinderella blue. So, I mean, their choice, um, I think they're gonna put some Disney stickers on it, stuff like that, do it up until the kids are on their property. They're just gonna be driving around and um, it's gonna be banged up and, and all that stuff anyway. So yeah, stick with us and it'll take you along the process. Uh, maybe show you a few little uh, tricks here and there uh, that I do and uh, hopefully we can get it done tonight Pretty straightforward process, but again, I'm sure it's gonna be a pain with some of these old bolts I just never been off here in 30 some years. So we'll get back. All right, here we go. We have the half inch Socket here and on the back side is the nuts and the front Is just a Phillips screwdriver. So we're gonna see if we can break these loose. going it's actually not too bad there we go there's our one side So years ago when I started doing this, I just, they're pretty simple to figure out. That's why I like the club cars. Uh, nuts and bolts, of course, they're steel, um, but the club car, the whole chassis, the frame is aluminum. So usually pretty clean and in good shape. So when you're rebuilding these, and up till 97, they made the clockwise rotating rear end. So after that, they went counter. So people who want to build these and uh, do the big, big motor swaps, engine swaps, um, they love these because they, they, they work a lot better. So there's two of these push pins in here. And maybe this was taken off at one time because it's missing one and they could have rattled out, but um, we got new push pins we'll put in there. So I'll need that. We'll disconnect our headlight assembly here as well. Alright, on up both sides. We'll start working on that dash. Well, this headlight just fell right out, so we'll just call that done. Said I'm connecting it. All right, so our front's clear now, and then we will now move to the the back of the front and start uh, disassembling that. 
All right, moving on to the front here. I don't know what's going on here. So this is where the roof support goes. Um, it's supposed to be a bolt. It just goes to the top and then it's threaded into the frame under the cow. But uh, I don't know what they got going on there. So I'm gonna try to take that off. Um, but that one's already missing. So we gotta take this off here. Uh, again, that's our half inch. And then this trim piece to get to it, uh, like I said, there's uh, T nuts that are in there. And we have to take the cup holders off to actually access the one of the T nuts, which is that, back under there. Um, that'll be a better view. So that should be pretty cut and dry to get the dash apart. there with me that light isn't too bright behind me all right let's see if we got some action these things are rusty So as for everything, I like to put the bolts back in where I took them out, but these will be replaced. Um, pretty standard, so we'll get some uh, new hardware for this thing. So the other side's out. I'm gonna wrench on this top one. I'm, like I said, I'm not sure what, what they're thinking or what they're doing with that. All right. Well, the nut came off, so I'm guessing we're gonna have to drill this out. So I'm guessing what happened is the top of the bolt broke off. That's what it's looking like. And they just threaded a nut on there um, when they did have a roof on here to hold that. And they couldn't get this bolt out. So that's all I'll document and show the, uh, show the customer when I get to the point. We're gonna have to drill that out and re-tap it, hopefully not. Hopefully we can get some heat on there, some good vice and uh, some penetrating oil and loosen her up. But uh, that's just, that's what takes the time, so. All right, so we got our T-nuts here on the inside. <laughs> And I forget what size those are. We're gonna have to play around and see um, because they do have a spot for a standard flathead screwdriver um, or the, the, the nut style. So I'll zoom in that for you. He's right here. But they strip very easy. And you can just chew them up. So uh, we're gonna take our time with those to get those to get those off. And this whole piece comes off in one section. Um, there's two up here, uh, a couple on the sides right here. Um, getting them back on, that's the pain um, because they just slide around. So I have a uh, I've concocted over the years um, my own uh, my own style of getting those back on with a small screwdriver. We'll go over that trying to thread those back in there but they're a pain. Taking them off shouldn't be too easy or too hard but uh, yeah getting them back on is not, is not easy at all. So uh, we'll come back I'll get the yeah I'll get the socket that we need. Um, I'll make sure I remember that. I used to have a uh, pile of these that just always kept the ones I needed for this exact cart but uh with the move and everything, it's hard to find anything. So I'm gonna go dig around my toolbox for about 15 minutes and hope I can find it. All right, so we have our uh, one fourth socket. And these are the little screws I was telling you about. They had to go with the softest aluminum possible. So we got almost all of them off. The two on that side, the two up top, one down here, but there's one right here. So. 
we're able just to sneak past the uh, cup holder. I might still take them off, clean them, refresh fresh them, but this one's all chewed up. Not for me. So that's the little things that just time, time, time. So I'm trying to get in there and not screw it up any worse than it is. But tried the screwdriver. Like I said, these do have a slotted head. And then the nut. So it's just about spinning on there. So that's not working. So just wanted to check back in and let you know. We're down to one. And uh, just perseverance, we'll just slowly still work on it with the screwdriver and then I might try to get an adjustable wrench and see if we can get it in there cockeyed and kind of, you know, whatever we can do to get this, to get this bolt out. So we'll come back once we have this off and then we'll show you how easy the front comes off. All right, so I whacked on it from the back side. This is laying next to me. It's in hell here. I'm using the biggest screwdriver I got to get as much leverage as possible. I think it's starting to turn. Here we go. Got it. As you can see, Focus, it's all chewed up there. Alright, one of these fall, fell out. That's the T nut. So, what I do is I get a, because uh, they will all come out. So, make sure to put it upside down. You got two on this side. The two in the center here won't be able to make that almost 90 degree turn but on the outside they do so we'll slide that back in there like I said always put you turn your bolts to the nut makes things easier when you go to reinstall it What I like to do is put a piece of tape on the end of these. You know, kids out in the garage, something gets knocked over while you're waiting for the uh, body to come back from paint and prep. Uh, all these little T-nuts, you can run to the, uh, any of your local golf cart shops or stores should have. Should have those in stock. I've had to buy them before, they're easy to lose, so. There's a couple bucks. should be able to lift up and remove the top the front there we go we're gonna get this prep for paint we're gonna sand it down help my paint guy out as much as possible That's what we're looking at. You know, as I say, this is all aluminum, so these are great cards. I love them. Um, not a lot to rust out and go bad. So this is actually not too bad a shape. You know, we'll definitely clean it up. I like to check our tie rods, uh, make sure everything looks good um, in working order. So the alignment was a little off. I was told this was wrecked at a, at a point, um, some kids driving it, so, you know, while we have this off, we'll check the alignment, leaf spring looks good in the front, there's one single ply spring here, 
uh, but your suspension for the front on it. So, but everything looks pretty good. These bolts and nuts look like they've been service and put new bushings in at some point so that's good you never know when you take it off what you're going to find or if it's going to be a mess a headache um, but this one looks like it's going to be pretty good to go for the front and then the rear next is we're going to take off a rear seat um, this was an old standard club car seat so it's not the flip down uh, i do like the diamond plating footrest it has here and it folds up. Uh, no way to really hold that up there. I used a bungee when I was uh, jacking it up and doing the uh, PM services on it. Uh, but yeah, we'll get all this cleaned up and uh, some of the stickers off, like I said, for our paint guy. And then we'll send her off to paint and then get the body back on and start seeing what other little cosmetic things that we can do. So um, again, this is the uh, switch for reverse neutral selector. I'm just assuming that that's not going to come off we're just going to have to dribble cut that thing right off so um, i've had i think one cart ever that that thing just came off without an issue so we'll try of course we'll try um and then have your choke button that's got to come off as well um and then all your bolts up front there's six and then um the back comes off pretty easy once we get the seats done so we'll check back here about an hour um, once i start getting all my tools collected and everything uh, put away so really bad about that that's why I have tools, projects strewn everywhere. It just causes extra time, so.